everyone. Thanks so much for stopping by my channel today. Uh, today I'm going to show you how to do a branch with some pretty, I guess kind of made up flowers. Um, they're going to be the white and the berry wine on a branch with some green leaves. Pretty simple. Again, just kind of a made up design. This is burnt umber I will be using. Berry wine, warm white, wicker white, it, along with fresh foliage. Now all of these are folk art paints. Some are enamels and some are multi-surface and it's just a matter of what I actually have on stock. I'm trying to switch over to the multi-surface just so that everything is the same and I'm not, I guess it doesn't matter about intermixing but just for the purpose of doing videos and all trying to keep it simple. Brushes I'm going to be using today are my favorite glass art brushes by Dynasty. And this is the number five. I guess you would consider that a round brush. And a number three. I love these brushes. These brushes are great if you're doing more of a single coat or if you're doing like, I mean, you can do multiple coat or multiple paint, paint colors with them. But I really like them for more of a, like doing my branches and all in the glass to try to get better coverage because they're really great for doing opaque coverage. Number 12 flat brush. I did get some new brushes. Yay. And number 10 flat brush. And these are one stroke flat brushes. All right. So let's go ahead and get started. I'm going to dip my number 5 glass art brush into the burnt umber and I am just going to quickly do a branch. You can multi-load you know, multi the brush. You don't have to have it just have one color in it but for starting off with this branch I'm just going to do primarily the brown and maybe do a little bit of the white and a little bit of the warm white to create the branch with. Branches I love because you can just just swing it, you know, make them, you know, kind of wavy a little bit. And I try to pull up at the end to make the branches a little bit thinner at the end. And then, you know, just kind of randomly place them. And then do, you can do some crossing over if you want. And again, for this, I am just kind of switching back and forth from one color to the next so my brush has all three colors in it and I just like to make it more of a random pattern and just keep raising up when I get towards the end trying to make the end a little bit thinner. And like I said on this, I'm just wiggle out a branch there. And I'll come back and fill it in a little bit. See how easy this is? I mean, it's not paint by numbers, but it's also not difficult. And really, as long as you like it, that's what I try to stress here, that's what matters. If you're creating something and you're happy with it, go for it. Don't ever let somebody discourage you, you know, because they, it's not the way they would do it. It doesn't have to be. And, and I encourage you when I'm doing something and you think of a better way to do it, first of all, I'd love for you to share it with me. Second of all, I encourage it. I love creativity. I love when people show it, express it. And it's welcome, definitely welcome here. All right, I think you get the gist of this. So it's just I like to use the three colors: the the wicker white, the warm white, and at least one brown. If you want to tap in some other browns, that's fine. I don't really find that necessary, especially if you're using the other whites. I think that creates enough variety that you can really get what you want. 
created. Now, actually, I'm finding myself not having used the other brush that I mentioned. I did when I did it on paper, because I always try to do a paper design first. And so I did that, and I did use both. But paper's a little bit different, too. Actually, my paper's a lot different. It's not really easy to work with. All right, so let's go ahead and move on to the, to the floral part. I'm going to do that first. And I'm basically double loading my brush with the berry wine and the wicker white. I can touch in some of the warm white. That's really neither here nor there. If you want to give your branch some drying time or hit it with a, a hair dryer, please feel free to do so. I'm just going to do wet on wet. And here's, well, that's not a good that's not a good show. So I'll show you my brush, but I don't have enough paint on the one side of it. You're supposed to aim for three quarters of the bristle to be full of paint. If you find that you're getting to a point where it's too much paint, just scrape it off or wash it if you feel like. I don't. I try not to wash them in between because it kind of waters the paint down. But here it is. All right. So let's go ahead and get started. I'm just going to do a real easy. Try to lean my hand so you can see just this touch where you wiggle a little bit and then you come back down. Kind of a similar, similar stroke, similar flower that I've done some recent, some other designs with recently. And most of mine are going to be more of closed up kind of look as opposed to open open buds, or open flowers, I should say, they're not buds. So I'm going to just keep rotating here. I'm trying to do them a little bit differently. Each one. And remember too, and I try to remind everybody this, when you're painting and you're looking at my videos, I am left-handed, so you might have to switch your design and do it a different direction. So like I'm starting from left to right or right to left, you may find yourself needing to go the opposite direction to feel comfortable with creating the design. It'll still be very similar. I'll go ahead and do this one again. However, it's just going to maybe start in a different direction and that's fine. And I know being left-handed, it can be a disadvantage at times when you're trying to learn something or someone's trying to teach you that's right-handed just doesn't work that way for us and I can I can do some things the same way as a right-handed but painting a lot of times is not something I can do that way now this one I'm just gonna do a couple petals here and there and you can make it easy too. You don't have to have any certain amount of petals on each each flower. That can vary. I don't know why I'm getting that to look the way I want it to look. Let me try this again. I can go back like that. That's not really what I was trying to do either. I don't like that. that and make sure too very important that you clean your glass before you paint on it wash it with soapy water if if anything at least hit it with some rubbing alcohol to remove any of the dust or fingerprints oil that kind of thing from your your glass before painting on it that will just give your paint better ability to adhere to the glass. But you see this is just a real pretty design, almost kind of like an apple, an apple, cherry apple, cherry blossom design. But it's not really meant to be specific to any type of a tree. It's just a, a made up one, which is fine. You can make your own designs. 
be happy with what you can make and create something new and that's fine. I like to just have the, the leaves kind of going in different directions. You know, they don't all have to be going in a circle or semicircle. They don't even have to be full, full petals. So I'm going to just kind of tap in there a little bit. And it really doesn't matter too much because I'm going to come over, come over these designs with some greenery. So you may not even be seeing the whole flower anyways here in a minute. And I find I, I, with the way I'm loading my brush that I do have a tendency to want to, let me scoot back in here, want, my dog's getting into the trash. She's so much fun to have around. Anybody out there have a blue healer? Alright, we're getting close to being finished here. So I'm going to touch up, freshen up, or straighten up. Oh, I don't even know. Make a cleaner look on this blossom. If you have any questions, please put those questions down below. I will do my best to answer them as quickly as possible. So I think I was doing this one up here. So I just want to keep them, keep them small, not too big. And I am just, this is a new glass container that I'm using now for my videos, for some of the videos. I am just trying to keep it simple and not too over. Alright, so the next thing that we're going to do is work on the green part. And I am using my... Number 10 for this one, my 10 flat brush. I'm getting my brush loaded. Now, when you're doing this on glass, you might need to tap it in to a little bit of one of the whites just to make it more opaque. If you're getting the coverage you want by just using the greens, then that's the fresh foliage in the thicket then that's fine too. But basically what you're doing is you're loading the brush with your two colors and then you can tip one side of it into the the white, whichever white you prefer and that'll help add some uh, thickness to it and make it more opaque. Alright, so we're going to start up here and I'm just going to, it's a different kind of a leaf, and I have done this recently in a couple other videos. I, on this one, I'm going to come back with the lighter at the top, just to give it a little bit different look. I'm going to be doing some different leaves on this, uh, just to give it some interest. Keep am afraid I'm going off the, going off the screen here. Sorry if I do, I'm trying to stay on. And then, I mean, you can do, well, on this one, I'm going to go this way. And then I'm going to do the darker at the top. Now, it's still not real opaque. As you can see, you can kind of see through to the flower. So, you know, if you don't like that, like I said, it might be time to add. Add a touch of the other color into your green. And then I'm going to just add, it's kind of like the basic one stroke little leaves, but they're just one sided. Just make them a little ruffly. And you can also do it where you make them a little wiggly at the end too. I'm sorry. All right, just put a little stem through there. Just see, this can be, you know, just a very easy, easy, easy design. Very pretty. You know, you could make your own little gifts for the holidays, which is perfect timing, right? Yeah, bring that over here. And then, like I said, we're almost done, guys. Thanks for sticking with me. 
And on this one I'm going to do just a full out wiggle leaf. Just keep going with it. Alright. Now the nose is the I, don't, I want to be careful too that I don't overwork the paint because I will make the paint below come up. So you just have to be careful with that. Alright, let me see here. I don't want to pop any more in here. Um, I might do a few right in here. Let's see if I can keep it. Where you can see it. I just like to kind of flip them around and I don't really, I'm not trying to keep them in one direction or the other. It's all over the place. All right and you could go down the stem if you wanted or put some in here but I'm going to leave it, leave it like that. I think it's pretty. Very pretty, very elegant I guess would be the word. And if you wanted to add some swirlies throughout here you could do that. I didn't put that type of a brush into this so I'm just going to leave it as is. Uh, once you're done with your bit, your glassware on something like this you don't actually have to bake it but I would recommend baking just to make it more durable. Put it in your oven without the oven being on. Make sure it's cold. Then put your glass in Preheat the oven with your glass inside, add the preheat time to your bake time, so whatever paint you're using, I would add the preheat time to that to make sure it's up to the full uh, recommended heating uh, amount. And then bake it, turn the oven off, allow the oven to cool before you remove it. The quick change in temperature is what can cause the glass to break, so be cautious. Alright, um, we're done for now. Give me a big thumbs up if you like the video. If you would, subscribe to my channel. I'd appreciate it. Make sure you hit that notification bell. Get notified whenever I post something new. And there is also a button below this video. Once you're done watching it, hit that share button and share this on your social network with all your family and friends. I would appreciate it. Alright, until the next time, you have a good one.